Welcome to From Fame to Forgotten, where I, Brady Harbage, will be following the life of washed up guitar hero Samuel Walsold after his cloud nine of fame fell right down after he sold out, became an alcoholic and an avid user of various illegal substances. We managed to track him down and we now bring you a one time special of From Fame to Forgotten as we discuss what his life is like now as a pathetic piece of sh instead of an infamous rock star bringing in buckets of cash as well as groupies. So, I'm at Sam's house. Climb over the brick wall, don't want to go through the front door. Alright, let's see how this goes. Pockets my wonderful house that I did not pay a dime for and only got accepted into after my parents found me hyperventilating in an alleyway with nothing but a pair of dirty underwear and a coke bottle resembling a bomb. Come on, I'll show you to my room. As you can see, my room is full of posters, CDs, games, and anything else that helps me get through the day. After visiting Sam's house and seeing his home life, we head to his local IGA where he shows us where he promotes his guitar lessons. What a dickhead. This is where I hang up flyers to promote my small business of beginner guitar lessons. I won't get hired anywhere else. The shop behind me, you can see, don't even bother. I've already tried to apply 22 times, and the answer is always a no. Well, it probably doesn't help that smoke crack in the dairy aisle one time, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so this is really this is it really. Every time I walk past this notice board I hope to see that the numbers get ripped off the flyer. I hope I can get a call or an email later in the week. Someone actually wants to do lessons with me. The great guitarist. Yeah. That damn liquor store though, every time I walk past it, it's just eyeing me up. I'll never be able to buy those things anymore. After Sam shows us his imminent failure of a business, we trek to the park where he attended primary school and also writes lyrics for his solo project. Pathetic. I come here every so often to write lyrics for my solo project that no one knows about. Most of the lyrical themes revolve around happy things such as depression, death, and suicide. Well, it's a great place though to just sit here and reminisce about the time we used to play on this oval. It's definitely better compared to waking up at my parents' house at 3pm, blind drunk and from, with the headache from Satan himself. I digress so. Anyway, one of the songs I've written today is about something different, so you've caught me on a good day. This one's about my cat Lawrence. He was, he was with me when my career started from the get-go and it's very unfortunate but he was disemboweled by my car after I ran him over as a practical joke. LSD really makes you think your cat's invincible. Sam's primary school has a lot of distinct memories for him so we visit what he now calls his workout space. What a load of This is where I come to work off steam, get, up to my, get my fitness up to standard. As you can see, the place is pretty professional and I don't have a dime to work out so I just, I just do it here. I do get weird looks from the people that pass by, but that's because they don't understand where the real gym is. It's right here and they're dropping their kids off to school every single day and they don't realise it. It's just got the perfect equipment, you know. Anyway, my music, my workout music consists of um, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Taylor Swift and anything amazing you hear off the radio. My favourite song is definitely Born This Way by Lady Gaga. It reminds me that no matter how much time, well, no matter how many times I f***ed up, it's who I am and no one can ever change it. Close to the vicinity of Sam's workout space, we visit the basketball courts where Sam used to play professional basketball when he was younger. He's rubbish now, so he must have been then. Believe it or not, I actually used to play professional basketball in my young years for the Chicago Cows. This is one of the courts I used to play on some of my biggest matches on. I got kicked off the team though. Can you guess why? WRONG! It was due to possessing, selling, and using illegal substances while under the age of 13. After visiting Sam's memories where he actually had something going for him, we head back to his parents' house where he tells us about his glory days. Oh, f People always say that you shouldn't dwell and live in your past and it stop you from moving forward. Well, in my state, I can't really move forward at all. It's like those were the years where everything was alive and there wasn't a worry in sight. It was just play a show, tour, record an album, fuck some groupies, feed the dog. Those were the days, you know? And now it's just boring and everything is stressful, especially my health. After all the binges of alcohol and drugs, it's just deteriorated beyond belief. Anyway, I'll talk about more what I did. I recorded three albums performed of huge acts like Ozzy Osbourne and Nirvana to count a couple. I made great income and even a special someone in my life. Unfortunately, she is no longer with us after she got sat on by an elephant in her zoo enclosure. The fuck, I just squished her to bits. I thought she was a mating partner. In conclusion, the days where it was at, I don't think no psychologist is going to convince me that they are over and I actually need to get on my life. 
like a regular person. Sam's glory days were, dare I say, reckless. However, they took a turn for the worse when he goes into his overdose. Well, it all started after this show. The band had just played possibly the biggest show yet. We pulled in over 100,000 people, and Jesus, the adrenaline was off the scales. Of course, I was so ecstatic, which was great, but it proved to be the perpetrator of what got me hooked on cocaine and about every other illegal substance available. It all started during the after party. I was off my face when a drummer pulled me over to show me to something totally f***ed up. I looked up, saw this perfectly chopped up line of coke laid upon the table. I thought, f*** it, why not? We just played the biggest show that we'd never thought we'd do. I may as well do the after party half and just have a good time. Well, little did I know this was the beginning of a substance abuse that Charlie Sheen hadn't even heard of. The next day it started. Methamphetamine, marijuana, heroin, MDMA, LSD, ecstasy, and a bottle of whiskey to wash up down. I was messed up beyond belief. My doctor said I had about 5.83 seconds to live. That's before they whipped out the defibrillator and gave me a rebirth from God itself. I was alive but barely breathing. Matter of fact, I woke up with a strange tattoo on my... After my constant substance abuse, the band had enough of me. Especially the damn media who covered every time I shut up blind drunk to a shopping mall wearing nothing but underwear. My guitar skills completely deteriorated. Every time I picked up the damn thing, I felt like I was a beginner trying to play their first chord. I managed to get my chops up to subpar standard, but it was too late. I'd already f***ed up one too many times. I fell straight out of stardom into poverty. I was actually homeless for a while. Luckily, I managed to gank a spot at my parents' house when they found out what I'd become. So I've been here now for about eight years now, and I've spent all my earnings on doing up my look. I'm 53, but I managed to pay enough money to make me look like I did when I was not even 20 years old. So I guess that's a positive. Everything else sucks, but at least I look young. So there we have it. From stardom to poverty, we have officially ended the interview with Sammy Warsford, whose career involved the use of every single illegal substance available. Cosmetic surgery to make them look 30 years younger, getting groupies, recording music, and working out at a primary school playground. This has been your host, Brady Harbage. And by God, you better have enjoyed this one-time special of From Fame to Forgotten.